right? Acknowledging, identifying, processing, and managing that particular set of emotions, that particular opponent, rather than rolling like, oh, hey, yep, I see you, you know, anger, I see you sadness, I see you rejection, I, sh I see you depression, I see you frustration, I see you disappointment, I see you sadness, like, hey, let's roll, sadness, let's roll, bro, let's go, hey, depression, let's go, let's roll, man, you and I go way back, <laughs> we go way back, let's roll. Welcome to the EQ Gangster Podcast, where you will learn practical tools to grow your mental and emotional health and intelligence to be the best version of yourself, both at work and at home. It is real, raw, and transformational. The journey of emotional growth isn't easy, but it's worth it. I believe in you. EQ Gangster. So this episode is going to be... Hmm, the difference between recognizing past emotions that come up and allowing yourself to process those emotions versus when those past emotions come up, stewing and brooding on those emotions. So another post jujitsu therapy story won't get into details, but this, this, person was sharing, uh, you know, what was going on. I could tell they were, you know, struggling and, and, and uh, kind of having a tough time. And so I said, Hey, what's going on? Is everything all right? No, you know, struggle bus. I said, okay, sweet. Like what, what's, what's, what's going on. And, you know, and there were, there were a couple of the folks that, cause, cause the conversation happened outside and you know a couple folks so there's going to be some more lessons in here than just the one i told you you know so a couple of the folks came out and said hey you know because this person i was talking to was they were crying and stuff and so like hey they're, you know both of them like hey are you all right everything all right and they're like no not all right and like okay you know awesome hang in there you know it'll be better and stuff and and I used to do that. I, I used to be again the guy that just was emotionally clueless, no no social awareness, slim to no social management skills. When somebody is sucking, you know, giving them the old thirty second motivational poster quote is is not is not always the best answer like it it's okay to say man I'm, I'm sorry that you're sucking right now A and it's it's like so I'm sorry that you're sucking and like it, it's okay to not be okay it, it's okay to be sucking right now you know and I, I, I don't know the situation I, you know you don't have to tell me the situation. But, but just, I just want to encourage you that it's okay to be sucking. It's okay to, to not be okay. And, and I, I don't know anything again about the situation, but just again, give yourself grace and patience and curiosity in that moment and just allow yourself, like if your body is telling you, man, I, I need like stuff hit the fan, some emotions popped up out of nowhere, I, 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 I gotta let them out. And again, now the, the, the goal is to do that in a, in a healthy, productive way, you know, not, not punching a wall, not throwing pots and pans across the, the room, you know, breaking a window or kicking your cat or cussing out a family member or something like that. That's not, that's not what I'm saying. If, if your body is, is. Like if emotions are coming up, what I'm telling you is there's a reason that it's coming up. And, and so I, and I told, I told this individual like, Hey, it's, it's okay. Like if I told, I said exact, that exact same thing, like 
there's clearly a reason and, and, and you know and I know this this particular couple and I'm like you know you you guys have been through a lot you guys have been through a lot and and you know and I said you know a, a couple emotional principles is like emotions can come out of nowhere from so they can come out of nowhere they can come with whatever intensity they're going to come with and they can be about one thing from a, a recent thing or a past thing or it can be multiple things that that kind of get all balled up into 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 one one kind of big giant ball of 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 rubber bands emotional rubber bands that are all different colors from different s subjects or topics or areas of your life and it can be like you know it can feel like oh it's just one thing well it's i mean the effect in your body may feel like one thing sometimes it, it can be it can be m multiple things and that's right that's what i i told this person i'm like look like I mean, it could be any one of the number of significant emotional events that you all have been through in, in, in the last, you know, 12 to 18 months. And if it's coming up, there's a reason. And the question was, it was an excellent question. Well, but the fact that it came up, does that mean I'm just holding on to it? Which is, again, the point of this episode. And, and so here's the answer. That was an excellent, excellent question. The, so the answer is it depends. For me, and, and there's in full transparency, there's some stuff that comes up recurring. And for me, the reason that it comes up recurring in this couple particular areas is because I have not processed I have not allowed myself to process these these set of this package of emotions, and and so it's like you know the analogy that I use because you know we both do jujitsu is it's like this particular opponent keeps showing up and said hey noble I want to roll and I just stand there and basically cuss out the opponent. And, and and have have all these these negative scripts and narrative around this particular opponent rather than you know doing the ape right acknowledging identifying processing and managing that particular set of emotions that particular opponent rather than rolling like, oh, hey, yep, I see you, you know, anger. I see you sadness. I see you rejection. I, sh I see you depression. I see you frustration. I see you disappointment. I see you sadness. Like, hey, let's roll. Sadness, let's roll, bro. Let's go. Hey, depression, let's go. Let's roll, man. You and I go way back. <laughs> we go way back. Let's roll. I haven't done that. So, and I told this individual, I said, look, so in my case, because, you know, when stuff is recurring in this particular area of my life or a couple areas of my life, I know it's because I haven't allowed myself to process it yet. So I'm still holding on for some reason, maybe because it's a false sense of control, maybe because it's some sort of weird pride, maybe some sort of weird... Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I Again, I haven't processed it yet, so I, I don't have the answers on, on that yet. But there have been other areas that of my life that have come up that I have allowed myself to process and be curious and discover and go on a treasure hunt and a safari to discover, you know, and turn up, you know, pick up the rocks and look underneath each rock and, oh, man, what's under this rock? Okay, got it. What's under this rock? with again grace patience and curiosity and trust rather than stewing and brooding which ultimately magnifies whatever that particular opponent is that jujitsu emotional opponent is and so 
And, and so when it's a scenario where I have allowed myself to, to process and it still comes up, that just means, it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm holding on, that just means that there's more to process. And, and how you, it's like, here's a proof of growth is that each successive time that that particular emotion, package of emotions or topic or area of your life pops up again, it should have less and less intensity and sting when it does come up, which is how you know you're growing and you're doing a better job at rolling with that particular BJJ emotional opponent. So so it could be, again, either or, and, and for me, again, using me as an example, I've got some areas of my life, most of the areas of my life where I have allowed myself to process, or, you know, acknowledge, identify, process, and manage those jujitsu emotion opponent when they pop up and I let myself roll with them. I mean, I only just the last four years, obviously pre prior to that, I, I, I wasn't even aware. <laughs> so, but, but the last four years I have allowed myself to do that in most areas. But like I said, in full transparency, there are still a couple areas that I have, I, I've still held on to for, for some, for some reason, maybe it's a form of, I'm trying to protect myself by holding on in some way, which is kind of weird. I got to, anyway, again, <laughs> I've got to think about it and allow myself to process some of these other areas. How about you? How about in your life? Do you have areas that, you know, okay, these handful of areas, you've allowed yourself to acknowledge, identify, process, and manage these set of or package of emotions and allow yourself to roll with those emotional opponents training partners, those emotional training partners, or have you done, you have, do you have some areas in your life like me where you have not allowed yourself to, to, uh, acknowledge, identify, process, and manage? And I'm telling you y'all, and I'm saying this to myself as the biggest hypocrite, I, I, and I'm glad I'm doing this episode because I, the longer I wait, the longer we wait to, to acknowledge, identify, process, and manage our emotions in particular areas, the bigger and stronger those training partners get and the greater impact they will have in different areas of our life, which could be catastrophic in some, in some cases. I'll, you know, I've got another, I've got another client who, who is only willing to go 10 feet deep with some of these different emotional injuries slash emotional training partners. He, he is not, he is not at this point willing to go deeper than 10 feet and and it, it, it is stunting his growth it, it is it is stunting and I would almost argue blocking growth now the good thing is he's still growing in other areas but not to the degree or the extent that he could if he allowed himself to to really dig deep and face and roll with some of these other, some of these other opponents, and it and it's affecting him personally and professionally. It's affecting his family. It's affecting his his work. It's affecting his behavior at home and at work. There's another. There's another leader. Big cheese leader. Big cheese leader has the fancy title. Has the fancy office. The fancy car. The fancy everything and man that this particular leader that I'm talking about is is absolutely affecting everybody around him and here's the thing not just everyone around him there are second and third order effects 
throughout the entire organization as a result of this this one particular leader's lack of willingness to 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 roll with some of these emotional training partners that he has to deal with that this leader has to deal with and man it's 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 really it's really sad and unfortunate it's really sad and unfortunate uh, and that's one of the the, the the saddest things when it, when a leader is not willing to work on themselves and when they think that they are further along in their growth than they really are and they're lacking that self-awareness they're lacking that social awareness to understand how their decisions and behaviors are affecting everyone else around them it's just it's brutal y'all so i just want to encourage you that if you do have areas in your life like i do that i have not been willing to acknowledge identify process and manage that that you do that you allow yourself and and maybe those are a couple of the areas that you need professional help with maybe you need to call up a legit counselor therapist psychologist psychiatrist to help you work through some of that stuff and that's okay. Like, I encourage you to do it. I encourage you to do it. And, and again, I tell myself the same stuff, the same stuff. You know, I got to, you know, I, I am actively at clearly going through this stuff, y'all, working on these areas of my life. So thank you for just being on this journey with me and, and, and letting me be on your journey love hearing your your areas of growth and your emotional origin stories that's going to be one of the upcoming topics for the eq mafia is we're going to be working through and talking through some of our respective emotional origin stories and, and helping each other get some more breakthrough and some more traction in some areas of our life if you would like to check out the eq mafia our community of emotional fitness folks. We meet twice a month on Zoom. It's a small group and we discuss and work on emotional fitness areas that, that, that we're all trying to work on and work in. And, and go to eqgangster.com and you'll be able to find a tab on there where it's talking about the EQ Mafia. You can check that out. Emotionally healthy people help heal other people emotionally. Emotionally healthy leaders create emotionally healthy cultures and organizations, which lead to and create and optimize and maximize results, outcomes, performance, and engagement.